God's open door for you. And I want you to just have your heart open to what you believe God's called you to do. There's things in your life that you've been doing over the years and things that you're trying to be obedient to God and just really to be refreshed in letting the Lord lead you in what you're doing and letting Him guide you in all ways. And so we're going to do that. One of the things I was, I was blessed this morning, and I, I desire that same zeal. I don't quite have it, but... Uh, uh, we were, Ann and I were out in the foyer chatting in the chairs before service, and this lady came up, and she clearly had something wrong on her face, and so Ann asked her, you know, what was, what was going on, and, uh, uh, and in her, Ann's little style there, she rebuked, not the lady, but the sickness, and said she prayed for her, and, and uh, I have to say, I was blessed by that, for her to step out and just believe God, and, uh, you know, just to see more of God in our lives, that we would step out and see those things and change. And sometimes we almost get intimidated being Christians. And so, I don't know, it's just something that we could just step out and have that boldness to see lives changed. So praise the Lord, as we look at God's open door in our lives, we're going to see that through Jesus, this has actually already been done. And it's something that we can truly enjoy. Galatians chapter 1, verse 11. Galatians chapter 1, verse 11. I want you to notice that the book of Galatians, this part was actually written to the churches, not to sinners. This is written to churches. Very important. You and I sitting here hearing the word, this was written so that we would understand and then we would do something with it. Okay? Paul spoke on three various things that will help us walk through that door that God has for us. There's three things that he talked about. What God did for us in Christ what the Holy Ghost will do through us, and what He's doing now at the right hand of the Father. You know, sometimes you maybe feel alone or feel like you're all on your own and understand the Word says that Jesus forever makes intercession for you and I. What's He interceding for? He's, he's laying the foundation so that we would move forward in our lives. And so we're going to look at Galatians 1 verse 11. It says, But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man, but I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it was through, through the revelation of Jesus Christ that you've heard of my former conduct. And I remember when I was first studying a little bit about Paul, I can tell you we rented a little apartment uh, from the Logans out, way out by Scotland there. And I would remember one evening I was reading about Paul and I suddenly got into a scripture talking about they called him all kinds of names and things because he was absolutely a horrible character before he met Jesus. And, and, and it was interesting that God chose him. He wrote much of the New Testament. And, but the, so just I remember reading that and it was almost like you could reflect on your own life and think of the, the areas of your life and, and suddenly I'm reading about Paul and his life and how suddenly the revelation of who Jesus was and what Jesus has done. And that changed his life. And it forever changed the future of, you know, the, obviously the direction of the church and the Bible and all of those things because he got a revelation there. But it says, I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. You know, you need to recognize that. Sometimes we get stifled and we go, well, I can't walk through this open door that God has in front of me because I'm not qualified or I'm not good enough or I, I don't know enough or I can't. You know, and they, they always say it's, it's just like when I, I remember when, when I first started, uh, we were young and married and, and had the farm, and, and, and you, know, you, you learned to collect receipts and things. And, and I remember um, having these big bags. That back then, they were, they were A&P bags. They weren't that big. They were plastic, and they were full of stuff. And I remember going to the accountant and, uh, and, and, and bringing them there, and I said, you know what? I don't know what to do here because I've got all of this stuff, and I feel like it's completely a mess. And she said to me, you just have to start. And so she started to work on that, and, and uh, um, that really was something that I never forgot. And even in that little example of life where your life might feel like it's in a bit of a mess, and what are you going to do? And just like the accountant said, you just start. And so you probably know that, Pat, from looking after other people's taxes, that you just start somewhere, and before long you get there, and, and then hopefully you can keep everything in order. But sometimes the enemy will use those things to stop you from stepping into what God's called you to do, because you fear, feel very disqualified. You feel very unqualified in area, and as Sandra used to say, God's looking for your availability, not your ability. The Bible says that when we are weak, he is strong. And so we see here that Paul is talking about that when we begin to live for Christ, because 
The bottom line is everything we have, everything we do, is based on what Jesus has already done at the cross. Grace is done. Provision is done. Healing is done. Baptism is, is done. You know, I was thinking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit just this morning. And, and if you'll read there in Acts, it says that they were all filled. They were all filled. That actually is said before they went and laid hands on anybody. It said that they were all filled. Well, sometimes in your life, when you look at the need in your life and you go, what do I do? How do I find the way? Understand that in Jesus, the way is already made. All filled is already made. Provision is already made. Everything that you have need of in Jesus is already made. Not based on us, but based on the blood of Christ. Based on the work of Jesus on the cross. As I've said many times, when Jesus declared, it is finished... He declared it is finished, which represents far more than overcoming rigor mortis. Think about that. When he said it is finished. I was, uh, an excellent book I'm reading right now called The Power of Right Believing through, from Joseph Prince. An amazing book. Just talking about all that was laid on Jesus. Everything that you think of something. If you've ever, sometimes if I've ever had the flu or I, I, I'm feeling sick, I'll realize Jesus felt that for me. Think of that. A drug overdose, Jesus felt that. Right? Intoxication, Jesus felt that. The, the, the horribleness of cancer, Jesus felt that. The heart-wrenching feeling of losing somebody, Jesus felt that. The, 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 the fear of lack, Jesus felt that. All of the things that you could think about that try and cripple you, Jesus took to the cross and the Bible says that he bore our sickness on the cross. He bore our pain. He was acquainted with sorrow. But then he says, but by his stripes we were healed. Just like in, the, in Acts where they were all filled. The provision is they were. They were all healed. The provision is there. Amen? The provision is there. And sometimes if we don't know to act on it, we get afraid to receive what God has for us. I'll give you an example. Sometimes um, we, you know, we, we have two accounts in our bank. One, one account pays our bills. The next account is sort of the, um, the little account that you can buy your Tim Hortons with or little things that you need. And so sometimes Sand will send me a text and say, you know, we've got to get cat food and our cat gets this expensive food. And so we need to make sure that there's money transferred from one account into another. And so you can go and use that. But you see, sometimes you can have fear and wonder, is there money in the account? Can I go and do that? Well, sometimes, you know, if we forget to text one another, it's almost like you take that chance. And so you swipe your card and you're waiting for it. And suddenly their bells go off and everybody comes running out and and there is no money, and you're, they're trying to take you away. That doesn't really happen. But the other day, so being diligent, we went to get the cat food and to get what we needed to get. And so I'm swiping away, and suddenly it says, no money. And I'm going, I was just there 20 minutes ago. Literally transferred the money into the account, and it should be there, and I should be able to use it and be well aware of that. However, the teller forgot to transfer it. <laughs> So kind of frustrating. So I phoned the bank. So give me a second here. Phone the bank. And you transfer. Yeah, yeah, two minutes. We wait two minutes. And I got the cat food and we got beef jerky. So we were good for the day. Cat For the cat food and beef jerky for me. So praise the Lord. But in that, and I find these funny little things that happen in life. That number one, in that case, the money wasn't in the account. But in the big account, it was there. But it needed to be transferred over. God has an open door for you. Sometimes in the fear of your life, you'll wonder, did God take care of this? Is God able to look after this? And God says he is willing and able, and he has because of the cross. You don't have to worry about if there's sufficient funds or insufficient funds in your bank account. When Jesus said, it is finished, when Jesus said, by Jesus Christ, you were healed, all the peace that you're going to need, all the provision that you're going to need, all the salvation that you're going to need, all the healing that you're going to need. It says he was acquainted with all that stuff. And he said, it is now yours. In fact, he took somebody like Paul and said, let's write a whole bunch of stuff in the New Testament to share with people to say what's been credited to your account. Isn't it nice when you get credit to your account? Isn't it nice when you look there and suddenly you remember you got your GST back or your income tax back or there's a credit somewhere? 
You know, I remember when back in the day when we didn't make very much money and we were just newly married and we were waiting for those little checks that you used to get from the government. I think Carly, you get them now. But, uh, you know, it's like if, if you're not quite making a certain amount, they'll send you these little checks. And they were like a big blessing. But the point is this. God's not looking for you to just sort of eat by. He's looking to be your blessing. And so we see here that Paul spoke of three major, three major things, all right? That what God did for us in Christ, you've got to look at this and say, it's already done. You don't have to somehow beg God and say, somehow, Lord, could you please heal me? Lord, could you please, you know, when we were praying for, for little baby uh, Isabel, you know, it wasn't a matter of could we maybe wake up God and if he could find time in his schedule and whatever, it was like, God, we thank you in the name of Jesus for the anointing. For the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, because in Jesus, it's done. And we lay claim on that. What situation are you in today? What door do you need to go through today? We talked about it last week. About There's a, a book from Ed Cole years ago called Entering and Leaving Crisis. And so, if on the other side of that door is crisis, and God's provision is in this room, at some point, that open door, you've got to leave where you were and enter into where God has for you. We liken that under the just like the promised land. When you were moving from Egypt and into the promised land, they had to go on the journey. They they had to move through that doorway. They had to leave where they were and enter into what God had for them. And how many know the one thing that God was saying to them was, watch your mouth, because they started to complain. They started to murmur. They started to backbite. They started to yak about stuff. And you need to understand that the provision was there all along for them. We know that they took an 11-day journey and made it a 40 uh, a 40 40 year journey, sorry, and, and yet God still provided for them. Think about that. Think about that. Back in the day, just in something I was reading this week, and you know, talking about the provision of the Lord, they used to have to gather things on their knees and bend over and pick things, and just like you would in the garden. But how many know that when they were in their desert experience, when they were trying to move forward into what God had for them, He sent them. What did He send them? He sent them manna from heaven. They didn't have to somehow grovel and beg and get down on the ground and dig for it. It was available to them. And we know it would disappear. And God wanted to give them fresh manna every single day. He wants to be your fresh manna every single day. Do you remember that book that Je Benny Hinn wrote probably 25 years ago called Good Morning Holy Spirit? Yep. That's just like something God wants in our lives, is to have that good morning Holy Spirit experience. That your morning is spent just spending time worshiping the Lord and just allowing God to fill you up, getting you ready for your day. Because you're going to go from your crisis into your promised land. But how many know, just like last week, that there's going to be giants in the land? There's going to be giants in the land that you're going to say, they are bigger than me. They are bigger than we. They are bigger than what we can do. And we know that last week, that, that what did they say? They said, they're big giants, and as they are in, in our sight, so are we. We're grasshoppers. And so 